Hello and good day to all of you. So welcome to uh, uh, to my channel, Online Electrical Engineering Review and Tutorial Channel. My name is Michael C. Passis and from, I am from Mapua University under the School of EECE. Okay, today we will have a good topic that we will uh, discuss but before we do that, I want to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, thank all of you to those who support my channel and also to those who are new you can subscribe on the subscribe button which is located at the right side of the video and for this you will be notified if there is no if there is a new video that will come out and again maraming salamat po to those who supported on this endeavor okay our name our uh, rather our next topic is uh, unbalanced polyphase systems which is under the polyphase systems power systems one now just a recap what we have discussed so far from the last topic our last topic is polyphase systems and then from there we develop uh, uh, different types of sequences uh, we also discuss problems and applications now the difference between balance and unbalanced polyphase systems dependent on two possible situations okay now the first situation is the source voltages are not equal to each other also they differed 120 degree apart for example you have currents ia ib and ic for them to become balanced they have, must have the same magnitude but if they have these values here 120 110 and 100 okay these values are not equal anymore so you're considering the first possible situation here as case number one and if they are not 120 degree apart for this example for example plus 90 and this is uh, 53.13 okay for example minus so again they are not 120 degree apart and this is not equal to each other you're considering now your power system or your uh, uh, polyphase system as unbalanced or in, unba uh, in an unbalanced condition or in other uh, in, a, in another possible situation which is the majority of the cases is this which is load impedances are not equal to each other what's the meaning of this for example you have a Y connected load as we have discussed on uh, balanced polyphase in order to have this load here as uh, balance you need to have equal impedances for example you have this type of impedance so again your impedance is ZA for example this is at point A uh, point B I point C and this is uh, point B so ZA is not in equal anymore to ZB and not equal anymore to ZZ so we're considering that the loads are not balanced anymore so that is an unbalanced polyphase condition so majority of the cases which is actually 80 percent are uh, case number two and from the other percentage which is 20 percent is for the uh, sources but here we need to have no uh, a uh, uh, reference in order to solve this kind of problems so we can assume that VAB as our reference so what is the meaning of VAB again that is the line voltage at phase A okay so if there's no given vector you can use this as a reference vector and again no an abc sequence or abc clockwise or a positive sequence if there's no sequence involved or assumed in the problem so we will discuss the next part of the discussion on unbalanced polyphase systems so again stay tuned hi so we will continue our discussion on unbalanced polyphase systems so to uh, answer or to uh, to calculate the problems on unbalanced polyphase systems especially on powers we need to 
have the following scenario but again the uh, computation is still the same you need to have per pace basis if necessary you can get uh, one power at one phase and then another phase and then another phase again so you have three phases in balanced polyphase if what we got one uh, phase we need to multiply it by three to get the total powers now in terms of unbalanced polyphase you need to compute the powers in a per phase basis so again the solution is three times actually to get the total because the powers in every phase now is not equal anymore okay it is mentioned here that if you want to compute for the total powers you need to get the power per phase and it must be calculated manually so we can recall the following equations here but we can you can also use uh, v squared all over r phase you can also use v squared all over x phase and you can also use v phase z phase then don't forget the conjugate this this the same for p q and s respectively now here in terms of i squared r i squared x phase and then s is i squared z z vector because on s you need to have vectors so you can also use in terms of voltage there's no uh, harm about that that's the same and thus if you want to get st pt and qt then st is the summation of the powers in terms of vectors in per phase basis sa plus sv plus sc in terms of pt you need to add all of the powers per phase as well as qt which is equal to qa plus qb plus qc and then the ABC formulas 1 and 2, which we have discussed on balanced polyphase, is also very, very important on this scenario or in this case. Also, we will discuss after this the delta to Y and Y to delta conversions, which is also a very, very vital tool for simplification of problems on unbalanced polyphase systems. So again, stay tuned for that and maraming pong salamat. Hello and good day to all of you. So today we have our discussion on a very important topic which we did not uh, mention on the last few lessons. But we will have a comprehensive discussion of this lesson. Just stay tuned and uh, it will be uploaded soon on the uh, on our uh, channel. So the we are under the unbalanced polyphase systems in lesson number four, power systems one, polyphase systems topic. So we need this uh, uh, delta to Y and Y to delta transformations simply because on unbalanced systems, we need to simplify uh, some uh, connections there. And then from a Y to delta perspective, we can simplify the calculations. So we will experience or we will apply this on some of the problems on unbalanced polyphase systems. So this is the perfect timing to introduce the delta to Y and Y to delta conversions. So this is just a recall on what you have already uh, learned so far from your previous lessons. So if we consider again a... Uh, Delta, when you say a delta, is a triangle. Y connection is a star or a T connection. So if you have a delta and if you want to convert it to a Y connected impedance, we have some formulas that we need to consider or vice versa, otherwise Y to delta transformation. Okay, now in this case, we have ZA, ZB, and ZZ. ZA, ZB, and ZZ are the delta impedances okay while z1 z2 z3 are your co called y impedances so when you say impedance okay is a complex number wherein it it has okay a real component and a reactive component or an AC system. You can apply this also on DC systems because the only difference between a DC and AC is 
there's no reactive component in a purely resistive circuit. So, whatever happens, this is a very flexible formula. Okay, we have some pre-derived formulas here, and it will be uh, discussed comprehensively with examples on the next few lessons or from uh, your lessons from your undergrad. So, the formulas for converting a Y-connected load to a delta-connected load is presented here. Okay, so if you want to get, for example, you have here your Y. We con concentrate on this Y, and then we need to convert it to delta. I want to get ZA, ZB, and ZZ, respectively. So to get ZA, this is the formula Z1 multiplied by Z2 multiplied Z2 by Z3, and then Z3 multiplied by Z1. And then... After you have that product and then you uh, add, you must have the uh, ZA here, uh, Z1 rather. To get ZA, you must have Z1. So what is Z1 here? It's the opposite arm. So it means, in other words, there is a shortcut here. Okay? So to get delta to Y, so you want to get the delta arm. That is simply equal to the cumulative sum. So when you say cumulative sum, you multiply, okay, two impedances, Z1 and Z2, Z2 and Z3, and Z3 times Z1 respectively. And then you divide it by whatever the opposite arm of your Y-connected, uh, Y-connection or Y-connected load. So it cumulative sum of your Y-connected loads and then you divide it by the opposite arm. And please take note, this cumulative sum is already a constant. So if you already computed for Z1, Z2, Z2, Z3, plus Z3, and Z1, that is already a constant at the numerator. So I call this sometimes NumK. When you say numeric, uh, numerator constant or NumK. Okay, for that, for that, we can now get ZA in a delta connected. So, the divisor must be the opposite arm of the Y connection. Okay, for example, if you want to get ZA, yes, you, you have here the uh, NumK. And then you divide it by the opposite arm of ZA, is ZA which is Z1. Okay, how about ZB, for example, again? So, this is also your NumK. It's a constant. No worries about that. And since this is ZB... The opposite arm at the Y-connected load is Z2. Okay? If you want to get ZZ here, NumK again, and then you divide it by the opposite arm of the Y-connected load, which is Z3. And definitely, you can now get the delta-connected arms, which is ZA, ZB, and ZZ respectively. And they are in complex numbers, which is you can have R plus JX, or you can have in a vector form, you have Z per angle. So we will continue our discussion on vice versa and vice versa of this, which is delta to Y conversions. Hello, we will continue our discussion on the vice versa of a delta to Y, which is uh, y to delta rather, which is delta to y conversion. Okay, so again, we must consider this figure at your right side, at your left side, which is composed of ZA, ZB, and ZC, where delta connected impedances, and Z1, Z2, and ZT, which is your y connected impedances. So for this, our main goal is you have a delta, and then you want to convert it to y connected. So what you will do is or the reverse of what we have discussed in the previous lesson, or uh, previous slide rather. So you want to get Z1 now. Okay, now, before you do that, as you can see from the formula, there is also a constant. From uh, uh, a Y to delta perspective to a delta to Y, the uh, constant is the denominator. So I call this as den K, or denominator constant, which is the sum 
of all of the impedances in delta. So that is a constant. As you can see, given is the delta connected load. So you have ZA, ZB, and ZC respectively. So you need to add all of these impedances. Then you have your then K. Obvious also on the, uh, that is for Z1. That is also obvious for Z2 and Z3 respectively. So you have the denominator constant, which is the summation of all of the impedances connected in delta. Okay, now, how can we get Z1, Z2, and Z3? Okay, I have a technique here, no? Uh, but formally, before that, if you want to get Z1, you need to multiply the adjacent arm. So, adjacent arm of ZA, uh, the, for example, Z1, the adjacent sum is, uh, adjacent arms, rather, is ZB and ZC, respectively. So, it is called the uh, product of adjacent arms. So, here for Z1, product of adjacent arms is ZC and ZB, respectively. For Z2, the product of the adjacent arm is ZA, ZC respectively. And then Z3 is the product of ZA and ZB respectively. So if you got those product of those arms, you divide it by the denominator K, you can now get the Y connected impedances, which is Z1, Z2, and Z3. Okay, there is a technique here, okay, that I can, sh I can uh, 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 share with you, okay. I call this technique as fishy fishy method. Fishy fishy method. Okay, so what's the fishy fishy method sir, there? Okay, for example, if I want to get Z1 here, so the denominator constant is summation of all the impedances, a denominator, no problem. Our main goal is the numerator if we, div uh, if we convert delta to y. So as you can see here for Z1, Fishy Fishy, ZZ, and ZB, respectively. Okay, another one. If you want to get Z2, Fishy Fishy, ZA, ZZ. And Z3. Fishy Fishy, ZA, and ZB, respectively. So those Fishy Fishies, okay, this is just my own version of that. It's the product of the adjacent arms. So you will have uh, a, a more easier you know, uh, uh, computation of these impedances using that fishy-fishy method. And thus, we can now have the delta to y conversions. Okay, please take note of that. And for, last but not the least, we already described this one on balanced polyphase systems that for a balanced y to delta load, the z delta is always equal to 3 times Ay. And please take note, when you, when you say a balanced delta load, your impedances on all of the arms are equal to each other. Okay? Now we will have the opportunity to solve some problems. So, see you all there. Stay tuned. God bless.